Hey all, welcome to A Fistful of Dice. My name is Matt. If you're unfamiliar with A Fistful of Dice, if you're listening to this audio uh, elsewhere, or if you're stumbling upon my YouTube channel for the first time, let me tell you uh, what it is that I do at A Fistful of Dice. I primarily talk about tabletop role-playing games. Um, games like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, things like that. Um, the name A Fistful of Dice comes from my early experiences with tabletop RPGs where I was really infatuated with the dice and uh, particularly playing West End Games Star Wars RPG and rolling just big old fistfuls of D6s. And I still really enjoy the rolling dice aspect of RPGs, but my sort of early infatuation with those dice has sort of spiraled into a lifelong passion um, and a hobby that uh, I enjoy more than just about anything else. For me, tabletop RPGs are an escape. They're a way to be creative. They're a way to socialize. They're a way to uh, hang out and have fun with people that I enjoy interacting with. It's a way to meet new people. Uh, and it's a way to just have fun unwind and just go somewhere else for a little while. So this series here, uh, Memoirs of a Dungeon Master, is going to be an audio only series, which is sort of new for my channel. Um, I've done videos in the past like Monster Matters that are primarily audio, but they do have a visual element. This is going to be more like a podcast, I think. And I'm sort of inspired by a few things. The first is Roll Up and Die. And Roll Up and Die is a uh, is a podcast that I do with some of my very good friends, um, Barker from Be a Better Game Master, and Alex from the channel Captain Gothnog. And we meet once a week and talk about various tabletop RPG topics, and just have a really good time doing it. And I enjoy the I enjoy the medium. I enjoy uh, the audio only uh, aspect of it. And then the other things I'm inspired by are uh, uh, Tim and James from Tabletop Terrors have started doing audio-only videos. Um, they have a few different series going on. One of them is called Charm Monster. The other one is called Damage Reduction. Um, and those are both very enjoyable, and I love listening to them. Um, the third thing is, again, Barker from Be a Better Game Master. He does podcasts as well on his channel about different uh, topics. He's done one on uh, restricting yourself creatively, uh, and he's done another one on uh, inspiration, I believe it was. And I really enjoyed those too. And it, on top of that, I've had a lot of people uh, ask if I could try and do something audio only, because for the most part, you know, they listen to my videos uh, in the car, or they listen to them while they're at work, or they listen to them while they're at the gym or something like that, you know, they don't necessarily need to see my face, <laughs> my, just my face. They don't need to see that all the time. Uh, and it's sort of, it's a cool thing for me because I'm able to just set up my mic and talk about whatever it is that I'm feeling inspired to talk about. So no, this is not going to replace videos. This is not going to uh, take the place of my usual videos. However, it is going to give me a new outlet, a more sort of general soapbox that I can kind of talk about whatever it is that I want, even if it doesn't necessarily fall into a particular series or a type of video that I'm wanting to make. So if there's a particular RPG that I want to talk about, I can talk about that. Or if there's a particular experience that I want to talk about, I can talk about that. Because Memoirs of a Dungeon Master is going to be just that. It's going to be stories and experiences and opinions, uh, different perspectives from my gaming life, from my life as a dungeon master, uh, because I have been playing in and running games for 15 years now. And that's not to say that I'm a veteran or that I'm an expert or that I know exactly what I'm doing because I definitely don't. But I do feel like I have a, a veritable pile of 
experiences and stories from my gaming life that I can draw upon to learn. And that's really what I'm here to do is learn and improve. And like, as far as I'm concerned, if you're passionate about something, if you're, if you're wanting to uh, be the best that you can be at that uh, vocation, then the best thing you can do is look back and take stock and think about what went well, what went wrong, um, how can I improve next time? So that's going to kind of be what this is, this Memoirs of a Dungeon Master. In addition to that, I'm going to be kind of answering questions, uh, asking for questions from people and maybe answering a couple of them uh, near the end. And ideally, uh, these podcasts will run about a half hour, I think. I'm going to try to keep them fairly short, between 20 and 30 minutes. So, this first episode I have titled Origins. And what I'm going to be talking about is my history in gaming, like a very kind of broad overview, um, because I have been gaming for 15 years. And that's weird to think about. So, 15 years ago, um, it was August, and my dad asked me if... I wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons. And I've told this story before, so. But initially, I was very hesitant. You know, it, the the name Dungeons and Dragons has this kind of strange... It has a lot of weight that it's carrying. It brings up a lot of emotions and thoughts and sort of knee-jerk reactions. When someone says Dungeons and Dragons, you know, what do people think of? For me, I thought, you know, nerdy guys in their basement. You know, the stereotypical, you know, really easy to make that connection sort of scenario where they're sitting there eating Cheetos and drinking Mountain Dew and playing D&D. Now, as a kid, I should have thought, man, that sounds fun. I want to eat Cheetos and drink Mountain Dew and play D&D, but I didn't really, I hadn't, I hadn't gotten to that point where I was comfortable yet with being <laughs> as nerdy as I was, you know? And when I told my dad, you know, I, isn't that for nerds? You know, he kind of gave me this look like, oh, buddy, you know, y- y- you have no hope. Like, you, <laughs> there's nothing you can do. Your destiny has been decided. You are going to be a huge nerd, uh, and you're going to love this game. When I was in college, I... Uh, I wrote a column. It was about tabletop RPGs, and it was called A Fistful of Dice. That's actually where it started, was in college, this newspaper column. And uh, I wrote about board games and RPGs and card games and stuff like that. Like, I would write about Magic the Gathering. I would write about, you know, different cool board games that were coming out. I would do reviews of tabletop games. But I would also talk about games like Dungeons & Dragons. And I did I did an interview one time, or not an interview, but I did a, a column one time where I was uh, talking to various people around campus. And I would say, what do you think of when I say Dungeons and Dragons? And not only were a lot of the answers very sort of not in line with what D&D was, but they were also, they ran the gambit. Like, it's just a huge diversity of responses. You know, some people would be like, oh, it's like a board game. And some people would be like, oh, it's like a, it's a, it's a card game. Some people said it's where it's where you dress up and hit each other with foam swords. That was always funny. But it was always something it was always accompanied with a frown or like a, a, a look of disgust, like, oh, that's that game. But then there were a few people that had played it or were familiar with it or knew people that had played it and, and talked about it positively. And people were always surprised when I told them what it actually was, that it was a game that you played with dice and, and paper and pencil, and that it was more about creating a story together, creating characters, creating a world, and playing out different adventures and events and experiences in that world. And people didn't really know that. And even when I explained it, they didn't really latch onto it. Because it's one of those things that you just need to experience. And when I was a kid, that was exactly it. I, I didn't understand it. Even when we went to our local Wizards of the Coast, because they had a they had a retail front uh, back then, 
and we went to our local Wizards of the Coast store. We picked up the third edition starter set and a couple sets of dice. I remember my dice were yellow with blue numbering. And we brought that beginner box home and even opening up the beginner box and looking at the map that was in there and, and the little module and the quick start rules, you know, these black and white sort of uh, stapled pamphlets and these character sheets. I still didn't get it. I didn't know what the numbers meant. I didn't know what the map was for. I didn't know what the dice were for. My dad and I had had a couple of experiences earlier playing Star Wars RPG, uh, with the West End games, as I mentioned earlier. And that was always really fun, but I was I was really young, and I didn't quite grasp the concept. I mostly just wanted to be Han Solo, and my dad told me what dice to roll. And it was a lot of fun. But opening up D&D, it was like a whole new experience. I was really into fantasy at the time. I was reading books like Dragonlance and um, the uh, Icewind Dale trilogy. I was starting to get into Lord of the Rings. And I, I had always liked The Hobbit. My dad had read The Hobbit to me when I was a, a really little kid. And so seeing this fantasy world that I could play in and these characters carrying swords, wearing armor, you know, looking like the characters from those books that I love to read, I was immediately drawn to it. I immediately felt something click. And as soon as we started playing, as soon as I rolled my first d20 and added that modifier, and then it was third edition, so I probably <laughs> I probably uh, added a negative modifier as well, depending on what I was trying to do. But after all of those numbers added up, and I and I had that total number in my head, and I told, you know, my dad, you know, I rolled a 17 and he told me, you know, oh, that hits or you succeed. It just something clicked in my brain and I just got it. It just after that first roll, I understood. Oh, OK, I get it. I say what I want to do. The dungeon master tells me what to roll. I roll it. Tell him the number. He tells me if I succeeded or not and to the degree that I succeed. And. From there, my love of the hobby, it definitely waxed and waned over the years. There were a few years where I wasn't as into it, um, and there were a few years where I was a little too into it. But it's always been constant. It's never gone away. I played D&D, you know, 3rd edition and 3.5. I played a little bit of 4th edition. Um, I played Savage Worlds, Call of Cthulhu, Legend of the Five Rings, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. As high school went into college, I started a game group. Um, me and a, a friend of mine in college founded a game group called Imperium of the Tabletop, <laughs> named after the Imperium of Man from the Warhammer 40k universe. And we played all sorts of games. We played lots of tabletop games, lots of board games, card games. But our mainstay was role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, Star Wars, it was Saga Edition at that time, uh, Warhammer, as I said, and also uh, different Savage World settings like Deadlands. And we just had a blast. We had so much fun playing those games, and even when we broke for the summer, we would just play more often. Instead of meeting once a week, we would meet twice a week, you know, and we would get together and we would, you know, bring food and just hang out and play. Uh, after college, well, actually during college, uh, a couple of the guys in the game group and I had a bit of a falling out, and um, it really soured my love of the game because I associated D and D and games like D and D with the the stress and anxiety that came from that experience, from fighting with those guys, disagreeing with those guys, and ultimately sort of ending our friendship. So I took a couple of years off. I didn't really think about D&D. I didn't, I didn't touch it. I didn't really even look back on those times. It was sort of out of my life. And during that time, I really felt like there was something missing. I didn't do a whole lot of writing. I felt creatively, like, stifled. Like I wasn't... Like I had this energy that I wasn't expelling and it was kind of building up inside of me and in any moment I was going to boil over or explode or something. And it was because I wasn't telling stories with my friends anymore. 
it was around that time that Pathfinder came out. I remember I was actually working at a game store. I know, I wasn't playing RPGs, but I was working at a game store. I was really into Magic the Gathering. I was playing a lot of board games. And at this game store, we got the Pathfinder Core Rulebook. It was a big, thick Core Rulebook, you know, probably 200, 300 pages. Yeah, yeah, probably 300 or 400 pages, actually, now I'm looking at it. But I picked up that Core Rulebook, and I opened it up, and I was reading through it, and saw that it was, you know, it was kind of a streamlined 3.5, and, you know, it had this kind of cool art style to it that I hadn't seen before. It was kind of reminiscent of 4th edition a little bit with kind of the more cartoony-looking, you know, uh, iconic characters, but I liked it. I dug it, you know. And um, I bought the Pathfinder Core Rulebook, and I, I you know, uh, my roommate and I, who had gamed together before, decided that we wanted to try and get a game group together. And so we did. We uh, invited a, a few of our friends, some who had gamed before, some who had never gamed before, and we formed a game group. And that game group game together for, well, we're technically still gaming together, actually. Uh, people have come and gone. We've added people, lost people. Uh, we've moved locations several times, changed games several times, been through, you know, a few different campaigns, but we're still gaming together. We still meet at least, you know, we try to meet at least once a month. And we play Pathfinder. We play D and D Fifth Edition. Um, you know, we play Call of Cthulhu. I'm I'm getting ready to run a Star Wars Edge of the Empire game for them. Um, you know, those are friends that uh, I probably I don't know if we would have been able to keep up with each other as well if we weren't gaming. You know, these are these are friends from high school, um, friends from middle school that I'm glad that we game together because it allows us that time to catch up to keep up with one another, to maintain contact and ma and maintain the friendship. Not to say that we wouldn't be friends, but having that gaming happen makes it a lot easier. Now, a few years ago, uh, right around the time I started really getting back into gaming, I had been playing Pathfinder for about a year, uh, about two years at that point, I decided to... Uh, look for videos on YouTube. And so I, you know, typed in D&D &D into YouTube. And, you know, of course, I got, you know, like the Acquisitions Incorporated games and a few other things. I have a video of Chris Perkins talking about fourth edition. But uh, in my searches, I came across some people who were making videos. And these were uh, non-professionals. And there were guys like Dungeon Master Johnny and uh, uh, Andrew Wood. And Tim Harper, Samwise Seven RPG, um, and Matthew, the gentleman gamer. I came across these guys who were making these videos, talking about D and D, talking about games like D and D, and I started really watching these videos. I started devouring them. I started watching them, you know, pretty much every day. And eventually, I, I decided I wanted to to join. I wanted to lend my voice to the conversation that was happening. And you know, I was sitting there one day and I was just thinking, if I if I started a YouTube channel, if I started a, you know, a way, an outlet for me to talk about RPGs, for me to put my experiences out there, because every, every person in this hobby, from the, you know, most veteran of grognards to the, uh, you know, greenest of newbies, have something to say about the hobby. And something to say that's worthwhile, most importantly. And so I sat there and I was thinking, and I thought, a fistful of dice. I loved writing that column in college. I love that name. I'm going to start the channel, A Fistful of Dice. So I went on YouTube, and uh, I think it was actually August of three years ago, and I uh, registered the username. And I filmed a bunch of videos. I filmed like seven or eight videos all at once, like in, a, in the span of a couple of days. Some reviews, a couple of videos where I talk about, you know, different experiences I had in gaming. I talked about a disastrous Star Wars RPG that we played in college. And I let those videos sit there on my hard drive. I, uh, I watched them over and over again after I edited them. And uh, just, I sat there and I didn't know if I wanted to put them out there. But eventually I did. I, I uploaded them and... Um, I put him out there. I shared one of the videos with uh, Dungeon Master Johnny. I just sent him a link on Facebook. You know, I said, you know, hey, uh, 
here's a video. You know, I I, I really like your stuff, and uh, the, you know, I've just started this YouTube channel. And if you could give me some feedback and let me know what you think, that'd be great. You know, I was just thinking he'd maybe you know watch a few seconds and let me know. Oh, hey, yeah, you should. Uh, you know, make sure you look at the camera. Don't say uh so much, and uh, you know you'll be great. You know, I was thinking that he would give me some feedback, but he told me he really liked the video, and he shared it out. He shared the link, and that that netted me my first like hundred subscribers. That really got the ball rolling, and they got got me a lot of traction uh, right out the gate. Um, and from there, it's just kind of kind of steadily grown. You know, I haven't really seen a skyrocket in subscribers but i've just it's been consistent and right now i'm sitting at um uh, i think i'm at like just under fifteen thousand, i think but maybe the coolest thing that's come from a fistful of dice is the people that i've been able to game with um starting the channel has really it's allowed me to network and talk and discuss with people that i wouldn't have otherwise ever known and people that I've run games for, people that I've played in games with, you know, the Provokers. If you're not familiar with the Provokers, it's a fifth edition D and D campaign that I run monthly on my channel. And uh, you know, I got to meet those guys, and that was such a cool experience. Last July, when uh, you know, they uh, flew flew over to uh, Western Washington, we all got to meet up and hang out and actually game together in person. That was that was incredible, a really amazing experience. You know, gaming for me, it sounds silly, but D&D is important. It's important to me. And I know I say D&D, and what I really mean is games, role-playing games. But D&D is the one that started it for me, and it's the one that even today persists, and it's still... It still captures me. It still grabs my imagination, grabs my attention, and just doesn't let go. Gaming taught me to be confident. It taught me to be decisive. It taught me how to socialize. It taught me how to look people in the eye and talk to them. It taught me how to problem solve, work as a team. It taught me how to create, be imaginative, and not be afraid to improvise not be afraid to create things on the fly confidently you know if if nothing else i met my wife playing this game you know uh, my wife tila we met playing dungeons and dragons so it might sound silly but D, &D is really important to me this hobby is really important to me this community means a lot and the channel, A Fistful of Dice, is just kind of ex an extension of that. And I'm grateful every day that I have the opportunity to talk to people, to game with people, to put my thoughts and opinions and perspectives and experiences out there and have them be reciprocated, have them spur discussion. And more than anything... I'm glad that I get to learn. I'm glad that I get to interact with all of these people, watch their videos, read their comments, and learn. Learn new techniques and improve as a player, as a dungeon master, and as a passionate sort of, you know, <laughs> purveyor of this hobby. So I don't plan on slowing down anytime soon with games like Dungeons & Dragons. I don't, I don't get easily burned out. And when I do, I take a break. I take a couple weeks off. I don't think about it. And I just, I just go for it. I love running games. I love playing in games. And I have no shortage of ideas and no shortage of things that I want to do. So I imagine that this is going to be a lifelong hobby for me. I have no reservations or qualms about that. And uh, just this year, I started an independent publishing company with some of those guys that I game with. Uh, Tim and James from Tabletop Terrors and Barker from Be a Better Game Master. We, we started the company Absolute Tabletop. And uh, we published quite a few supplements, and they've been well-received. And they're a lot of fun to put together, and it's a lot of fun to do that. And it's going to allow us 
a lot of opportunities to work with other people in the community as well. Um, and that to me is really, really cool. So when I say I love D&D and I'm thankful for D&D and that D&D means a lot to me, you know what I mean. Because it's given me so much. And for that, I will always be grateful and always be thankful and always feel fortunate. With that said, let's answer a question. So this question comes from Simon O on the Fistle of Dice Facebook page. And he asks, what do you do to come up with such vivid descriptions? Um, and to be honest, I actually, I don't think my descriptions are that vivid necessarily. Um, I definitely enjoy describing things. I enjoy the narrative aspect of it. But I think that there is such a thing as being too descriptive, too vivid. Uh, you have to leave room for the player's imaginations to fill in those blank spaces and to answer those questions that they might have. But a good thing to do is to pick a couple of senses. Pick two or three senses. Think about what things look like, what they feel like, what they smell like. And lead off with those, you know. As you enter the room, you're overwhelmed with the smell of mildew and mold. The walls drip with water pooling on the floor. And as I'm saying this, I am visualizing walking into the room. I am, my eyes are closed and I'm visualizing what the room looks like. I'm putting myself there. Instead of trying to force the description, force the image that you have into your player's brains. Instead, put yourself there. Look at that object. Look at that non-player character. Walk through that room and describe what you see. Describe what you smell. Describe what you feel. Describe what you hear. And let the player's imaginations do the rest. Anyway, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Memoirs of a Dungeon Master. This is definitely going to be a little bit of a divergent sort of series where I just kind of go off and talk about whatever I want to. But I hope you enjoy it. And again, it's not going to, uh, uh, you know, impede my ability to make my usual videos. So give me some feedback in the comments. Let me know what you think. And if you're listening to this audio elsewhere, please head to uh, youtube.com slash a fistful of dice for more content. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. Take care, and happy gaming all.